name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our, our broadcast of the Mass on the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Again, my name is Father Jim Lickus, my recently assigned pastor here at St. Richard's. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all that you need show you have not unjustly condemned. For your might is the source of justice. Your mastery over all things makes you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved. And in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are a master of might, you judge with clemency, and with lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you. And you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind. And you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. to my voice in supplication. Lord, you are good and forgive me. All the nations you have made shall come. They will bow down before you, O Lord, and glorify your name. and do marvelous deeds, you who alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. But you, O God, are compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, O Lord, abundant in mercy and fidelity, turn and take pity on me. O give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to the aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. 
glorified be your Lord. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No, if you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, and yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables, to fulfill what had been said to the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what has lain hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin, and all evildoers. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears ought to hear. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, again, welcome everyone. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast. You know, as we work our way through the Gospel of Matthew, this is a very uh, fun time as we hear the parables that our Lord uses to teach the crowds. They are so rich that we can always go back to them and discover new insights, allow it to touch our hearts in a new way. Now, two weeks ago, we heard our Lord praise his Heavenly Father for revealing the mysteries of the Kingdom of Heaven to the childlike. And then last week, we heard how the kingdom of heaven is like seed, sown on different types of soil. Now today we hear three parables from our Lord regarding the kingdom of heaven, that it is like wheat sown with weeds, it is like a mustard seed, and it is like a bit of yeast in a batch of dough. And the meanings of these parables are fairly straightforward. Jesus actually explains the first one to us. The weeds are the righteous, and the weeds are those who do evil and who cause others to sin. When Christ returns, he will separate them. But we are to leave that judgment up to God, not to try to do it ourselves here in this present time. And the last two parables demonstrate how amazing the kingdom of heaven is, that even when it starts from the smallest of beginnings, it can grow and expand into something greater than we could have ever imagined. It's lovely. It's tempting to leave it at that, now go on with our day. But Jesus doesn't tell us parables just to entertain us, make us feel good. He is teaching us about how we are, to, how we are called to live as disciples of Christ. These parables speak to us about our role in the kingdom of heaven. That role can oftentimes be challenging. We start with the first one, the weeds and the weeds. No one has to be convinced that evil exists in the world. We see it every day on the news, if not in our own lives. 
And of course, we want something to be done about that evil. We don't want to just accept it, that that's the way the world is. There's nothing we can do. So what to do? Well, on the one hand, there can be the tendency in our culture to want to explain away evil, right? to explain away sin. So for example, when someone commits a heinous crime, we want to understand why. Perhaps if we understand why they did something evil, we can fix it so that they won't do it again. So we look at their childhood, we look at their socioeconomic status, we look at their mental health, try to find the reason for why they would do what they did. And that's fine, right, to a point. There can be mitigating factors, of course, and God knows that. How we were raised, the circumstances of our life, our mental health, these are things largely out of our control that can have a profound effect on how easy it is to choose the good. Nevertheless, we are still responsible for choosing the good. We are fallen human beings, prone to choosing sin because our nature is wounded. So we cannot explain evil and sin away completely to the point where now we are blameless, right? I am just a victim of my circumstances. I can't be held accountable. The premise that Jesus begins with is that there are those who are wheat and there are those who are weeds. There are those who choose to be righteous and those who choose to do evil and cause others to sin. And because we will be judged accordingly, we must be responsible for which one we are. Otherwise, that judgment would be unjust. God would not reward the righteous if they did not have some role in their righteousness. He wouldn't punish those who do evil if they didn't have some role in choosing evil. We are, ultimately, responsible for our choices, whether we are weeds or weeds. Trying to excuse evil is not the proper response to it, that we condemn it, we fight it, we try to eradicate it. Which brings us to the other extreme in our response to evil. Evil causes suffering, tremendous suffering. And we may want to say to God, do something, right? make it stop. I'm tired of waiting. Pull out those weeds now, not later. And God says, no, not now, later. You will show patience. Let them grow together for the time being. I will separate them at the end. You don't know which is which. You don't know how they will grow. And so it's not your role to judge. It's not your role to condemn. So what is our role then? What is our part in the fight against evil, in the building up of the kingdom of heaven? That brings us to our other two parables. A mustard seed is a tiny seed, and it, it grows many times its size into a bush. A bit of yeast can leaven three measures of wheat flour, which is enough to feed a hundred people. We plant the kingdom of heaven with every righteous act, and it can grow beyond our wildest dreams. Mother Teresa took a dying man in the gutters of Calcutta, offered him comfort in his final days, tiny little act of love. Now there are thousands of missionaries of charity throughout the world bringing the love of Christ to countless lives the last 60 years. The problem of evil can seem insurmountable. The suffering in our world can seem so great. We may think, what can be done? What difference can I make? What can I do, little old me? We can love our children. We can welcome the stranger. We can defend the weak. We can forgive those who have sinned against us. These acts may seem like a drop in the ocean, small and insignificant, but to God, they are mighty deeds and all, his, all that he needs for his kingdom to come. We are not capable of seeing into another person's heart, right? judging whether they are righteous or evil, whether they are the weeds or the weeds. Nor are we capable of seeing through the eyes of God and comprehending how small acts of righteousness can spread over the face of the earth. So we don't try to judge. We don't try to comprehend. We simply do our part by loving the person in front of us, leaving the rest up to God. If we do that, then we are disciples of Christ. We are trying to be that wheat, and we will be counted among those who are chosen, shine like the sun in the kingdom of our Heavenly Father.
And together let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in the love and mercy of our Heavenly Father, we offer him our petitions. For the Church, may all her members, rooted firmly in Christ, be living signs of God's mercy and kindness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of governments and communities, may they ground themselves in wisdom, truth, justice, and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who seek refuge from violence, war, poverty, or abuse, may they find places of welcome and relief shelter, and support. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing and peace for the sick and suffering members of our families and faith community, especially Esmita Abir, Marcus de Souza Lima, Livia Gabriela, Irenice Tavares, and Luciana Lima. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of the medical community, may those who serve in the wide variety of healing services be kept strong in body, mind, and heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us gathered here in this space and with us in spirit, being fed by God's word and sacrament, may we be the face of hope and faithfulness in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died and for those who mourn their loss, we pray especially for Jim Wilmot, Fred White, Maxine Zirhut, and Larry Emond. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, hear the prayers of your church and grant us today what we ask of you in faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all the salvation. O God, when the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, the sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Archbishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand down the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his Almighty Father, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Sins of the world have mercy. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thank you.